Hello and welcome to another Montmartre art lesson. In today's lesson we'll be creating a watercolour study of some flowers in a loose painterly fashion. So I'll give you a rundown of some of the materials we'll be using in this project. Regarding paints I'll be using the Montmartre watercolour 12 pack. For the support I'll be using the Montmartre watercolour 300 GSM pad. For my ink, I'll be using the fine tip markers. For my brushes, I'll be using the 50ml Artist Taclon brush and the number 4 traditional mop squirrel. I'll also be using a round plastic palette, some paper towels, a sketching board, some tape and of course water. And incidentally, if you'd like to learn more about materials and techniques, then check out our watercolour materials and techniques video. It's very in-depth. So to begin with, I take my paper to the sketching board. I have set up my arrangement and I'm drawing it from life. The first thing I notice about my arrangement is the triangular shape. So I rough that in. By the way, we have supplied a key line and photograph of this arrangement in the PDF version of this lesson at www.montmart.tv. Our drawing is done, so let's add some pigment. So the first step is to dampen the paper, and we do that to soften the first wash. Dip your wide brush into the water and liberally apply it over the sheet, as evenly as you can. Then soak up the excess with some paper towels. Now let's apply some lemon yellow to all the warm parts, mainly the flowers. So the first lightest yellow wash will be on all the flowers and although they're red you want a yellow underbase. So we'll also do the yellow in our irises as well and this little fella down here. So let's apply this. Just apply a little bit of yellow and dilute it with water. And I'm using my number four squirrel mop for this. Lay the paint in quickly. It's just more expressive. While that's still damp, we're gonna drop a bit of medium yellow into it. You can see how this blends into the damp lemon yellow. So while that's still damp, now let's create an orange from a little bit of red and build up the tone. The colours look different when they dry, so be bold and experiment. Well that's looking great. I am now going to attempt to make a purple to show the beautiful irises off. For your purple, put out a little bit of phthalo blue and a little bit of crimson. Add a little water and look at that lovely purple. Apply it to the iris. How good does that colour look on white paper? Watercolour is just so beautiful in its simplicity. I really like the way it reacts to the support. You can never really have total control. So while our purple is still a little bit damp, I'm mixing up another purple, but I'm making this one a little bit darker. Refer to your flowers or the photo to guide you on where to lay in the darker hue. So while we're in blue mode, Let's paint in the vase. And although my vase is a yellowish colour, or ochre, I'm going to use a bit of creative licence and paint my vase blue. So the first step is to dampen in our vase. As I do this, I only cover the area that I want to colour. So squeeze out some ultramarine and a little bit of Thalo, dilute them with a bit of water. I'm going to paint the ultramarine first on this side of the vase. Make sure the mix is watery and lay it in. Drop the pigment in here and there for effect. Whoops! Now lay in some phthalo in on the other side. You can see how wet that mix is. The wetter it is, the more haphazard the blend. This is the lovely, unpredictable part of watercolour painting. 
that blend looks fantastic and it pretty much blended itself. The colours will just keep interacting. So as I said before, because I'd like this side of the vase to be in the light, I'm just going to dab out a little bit of pigment to show a highlight. So here goes. Well that blue is half dry so it's ready to darken the dark side of the vase. And we're going to do that with crimson red and while we have our crimson red we can put in the dark centres of our gerberas. Remember when you do this type of painting that sometimes less is best. I once heard someone say it's not what you put in it's what you leave out. Let those underlying colours show through it creates a more dense colour. So while we have our blue out, let's paint in the tablecloth and the first step is to put a very light wash of ultramarine over the tablecloth. Just slap it on. It just feels great to be fluid with painting. So let's darken the tone up now and place in our shadow. Work right along here. Now the other side, but make this wash a little bit lighter. Darken your mix with some crimson and lay a third coat in the darkest area. While the blue is drying, let's turn our attentions to the green. So let's mix up a nice green from a little bit of medium yellow and a little ultramarine. I know there is green in our pack of paints, but I think it's best to mix for specific colours. I like the way the ultramarine mixes with the yellow. So basically what I'm doing is just roughly suggesting that um, foliage. So I'm just dragging the paint down in a crisscross movement. Don't be too controlled. Vary the strength of your green for the interest's sake. Look at that lovely natural blend. Lay in the green fairly darkly into the centre of the bunch. The negative space works against those daisies. As I paint the background green, I get lighter as I go up the page and I'm adding water to do that. This will create an airy look to the arrangement. Give the leaves a coat of this light mix as well. As you look at your arrangement, you'll notice that there's lots of different types of greens. The one we have here is fairly dirty, so I'm gonna create a bright green out of phthalo blue for the stalks of the iris. The green you get from mixing phthalo and medium yellow is a lot more clean and intense and complements the grey green nicely. Paint in the iris stalks and glaze the leaves too. Now let's give these white daisies a bit of depth and create the shadow. And shadow comes up as blue. So put a very light wash of ultramarine blue in. When viewed from a normal distance, that shadow looks just right. Now I'm going to paint the background now and I'm going to paint it red because I think it will complement the green very nicely. Now because I'd like my red to fade from dark to light from the bottom to the top, I'm going to turn my board upside down and work on it like that. So lay out a little bit of brilliant red page and a dot of ultramarine. For the background, first thing I do is moisten the paper. While my paper is damp, I lay in a brilliant red wash. I lay in a fair amount of pigment across the page and create a graded wash from there, adding more water to the mix as I move down the page. Try and work as quickly as you can. Do one side of the vase and then the other. Then let that dry ready for the next step. Now add in a little ultramarine to your brilliant red and glaze that over the previous coat of red. Let some of the underlying colour show through and grade this wash as well. Now turn the painting back the right way. The painting is pretty much finished now. Just the small details like the tablecloth stripes. I'm using ultramarine for these and keeping in mind the direction of the tablecloth. Now to lay in the dark areas under the table. For this I use burnt umber. This dark tone will help draw the painting together. 
You don't want to make it too dark though, or it will throw the painting out of balance. Our study of flowers is pretty much complete, but there's still another way that we can add dimension, and that's by using pen on top of it. Pen and ink has been used by artists for centuries. So I'm going to use the fine tip markers and I'll be using the black as my pen. Well, I really hope you give this project a go because I think that anyone can create a watercolour that they can be proud of. So until next time, keep on painting.